In this video I will give you a lot of first-hand tips to recognize handmade gaiwan and also quality gaiwans in general. So let's get started! Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. And if you're new here in our channel and you're also looking to expand your tea horizon and improving your brewing skills and tea knowledge, then make sure to click on the subscribe button. Today we are speaking about teaware and in particular about gaiwans. And if I look for example at these two gaiwans here, at the first glance, it's pretty clear to me that this one is not handmade. It, is, uh, it was uh, um, mold casted. When I look at this guy one here, I at least have at the very beginning already some doubts. I'm not sure at the first glance if it is handmade or not handmade, but I have already some indication that it could be. And if I just start taking a closer look to it, and turn it around, by looking at it, I'm pretty sure it is handmade. Now, this I would say 100%, I'm sure it is not unmade, and this, let's say I'm about 90% sure that it is unmade. You can never uh, be 100% sure, but there are a lot of different uh, indications that you can look at, and if you collect a few of those indicators, then your confidence that that guy when is handmade will rise. So we want to look together at these kind of tips today. And uh, um, what's the difference between a handmade and a cast molded guy one? Is, uh, so a mold casted guy one is not uh, in the taste of the tea or is very little affected, if not at all. The difference is merely um, aesthetical, uh, if you want in the artistic value, but there is a point to be made. Uh, to be made. Um, the taste, the way you perceive the taste, is not only influenced in an um, objective manner by your uh, taste buds, but also the, um, the feelings, the environment in which you are, the way that you set up your chashi, plays a big role in the way you perceive the taste. In the same manner, the aesthetics of the guy ones you are using and the rest of the teaware influence the way you will uh, perceive the taste of that particular tea. Now, if you don't believe that and you think uh, uh, I'm not influenced at all by the appearance and by the aesthetics, every tea tastes the same, then probably this is not the right video for you. But if you think that there is also a subjective aspect in the way you perceive taste, then it's better that you stick till the end of this video because I will give you a lot of tips all um, first hand that is very very hard to find elsewhere and I think it will change a little bit the way you will select guy ones in the future. So the first uh, um, I said there are different topics that I want to speak about and the first one that I want to speak with you is how to distinguish the difference between a handmade guy one and a mold casted guy one. There are two different techniques to manufacture a guy one. The uh, first one, and by far the most uh, widespread, uh, is using a mold and cast uh, the guy one in it. Concerning this technique, there is a very good description on the website by David Dutko. I will put a link in the description below this video, and I won't give you more detail now about uh, this uh, particular technique. That is also not the one that we actually want to recognize. But as said, have a look at the website, it's pretty well um, explain how that works. And then we have another technique that is a completely handmaking a guy one. Now we have to take care because this uh, um, mold uh, casting a guy one is used both by large factories but also by single artists. So a single artist what would do would first uh, throw um, by hand a guy one on a potter wheel when he has done the guy one that he wants, he used that one guy one to produce a mold, a form, and then will use that form, that mold, for future production. 
a still uh, there is a still quite a lot of hand handwork and these uh, uh, steps of uh, using a mold is even further optimized by larger factories that minimize really reduce to a minimum the interaction with uh, uh, humans with the men so now when uh, how to recognize a guy one that has been mold casted with a guy one that has been uh, um, made by hand on a potter wheel so uh, First of all, one thing that you want to look at is sharp edges. And why? Now, look at this guy one here. Uh, in particular, at the foot of the guy one. That's uh, the place where you usually discover this thing. If you look uh, at the foot of this guy one, it is uh, relatively tall and it has re a sharp edge both on the inside and on the outer side of, uh, the, um, of the rim here. If you take a guy one that is not completely um, handmade, but is made with a, with a form, with a mold, and you look at the foot, the foot has uh, a um, roundness on both sides. It's not uh, very sharp. Why this is the case? This is the case because uh, when you use very sharp edges in the mold, you have very high risk that when you demold, it cracks. You have a stress concentration in the places where you have sharp edges, and then when you remove it from the form, from the mold, it breaks in that particular uh, position, in that particular location. While when you put that on a, on a potter wheel, you don't need a mold, and so you don't need to demold. And you can, you can have a fairly sharp edges. Also here you see the lid. Yeah. Don't be mislead by the fact that here you have a sharp edge. I know this is not an easy one. This kind of uh, uh, button here is very common actually in uh, um, guy ones that are not handmade and they basically do that in two parts and they put it together. So I say this is, uh, there is not a single criterion on, that you can use to evaluate that. You have to collect a series of criteria and when you collect a few of them on the same item, then your confidence level um, increase. The next point that we want to look at is the thickness of your guy one. And again here, if we look at these two, it's very hard to render through the camera, you have a little bit to trust me. This uh, guy one here is very thin, down to the rim. While this one here is not that thin, it's a little bit thicker, you can feel it in your hand, and is rounded. It's a bit... Um, rougher if you want and uh, this is for the same reason if you have a very very thin guy one and you use a mold you risk to break it when you take it out of the mold um, i believe that this thickness here would be possible to do it in a mold maybe a little bit at the limit but if you look at these cups here they are super thin really it's like almost like paper this cup you cannot do in a mold, it would break. And uh, uh, with this cup we can look also at another difference between uh, um, a guy one that is uh, mold casted and a guy one that is handmade. That a guy one that is handmade, no guy one is precisely equal, identical to the next one. You always have tiny difference. And the best way to discover them is, I don't have here two guy ones actually that are the same and handmade, but I have two cups that are handmade. And if you overlap them, you see that they are not matching. I try, you see, one goes actually inside the other. Yeah, you can also try like this. If I put this one here, you have just this little bit of rim coming out. And if I do the other way around, there is much more coming out. They have two different size. Why? Because they have been made by hand. Now, this is also a criterion that is a little bit tricky. Why? Because um, the artists use rulers to help uh, themselves uh, um, reproduce in similar shape. And by the use of rulers, they can actually reproduce the same shape down to less than a millimeter. But for sure, if you see two guy ones that are not exactly the same and actually is the same product, then you can be pretty sure it is unmade. And another thing you can look at is how circular is the, uh, the guy one. Uh, as I said, on a potter wheel, you can achieve fairly circular guy one, but when the, you have shapes that are much smaller, like this one, if you look at it, you can see that it's not precisely circular. With this cup, 
we can look also at another aspect of uh, um, how to recognize a, a handmade uh, gaiwan and it is that some gaiwan and some cups when they are um, when they are thrown on a potter wheel the, the clay is raised up by hand or by using some tool and when you do that basically you, you raise up your clay you produce some grooves on the inside of the cup these grooves can be removed especially on larger gaiwan but it's very hard to remove them or maybe it's not even in the intention to remove them when the cup is very very thin so if i pass my finger in here i feel that there are circular grooves going all the way around so uh, this uh, is uh, a few tips uh, about how to recognize uh, the guy ones we said look for sharp edges look at the thickness of the guy one look if the shape is identical between guy ones of the same series and look if there are grooves inside the guy one and now we move to the next topic which is the quality of the porcelain as you know the porcelain is white but there is white and whiter and i want to show you that to you i have here a small setup maybe you have, have been asking yourself what do i have here on my table this is a light a white light and i take uh, our nano shanghai one and i put it here on the light you see it is white but and transparent but if i take this handmade guy one and i put it instead of this one here i hope you can see through the camera that this is whiter and this is because this porcelain is of higher quality is more pure and in most cases uh, when you an artist decide to do a guy one by hand is also using better quality uh, porcelain this is not a criteria that tells you if the guy one is handmade or is not handmade but it reflects um, the quality of uh, the guy one you're using and uh, uh, this is an aspect that you can uh, uh, check also on guy ones that are not necessarily uh, white so for example if i take this guy one here is the other way around um, our cloud guy one it is a, a Celada, celadon color so it's a very pale uh, blue color but if you put it on a light you see that uh, it is there is no yellow in it there is no off color it is actually it's very difficult probably to render through the camera but it has a beautiful color like a very clean sky so you can do this check also with porcelain that is not white however you can do that only with porcelain so if you take this guy one for example which actually is also handmade and you put it here you don't see nothing because uh, it's not made of porcelain this is stoneware another aspect that you want to check is not only that there is no yellow in the white that is really 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 a pure white like this one and not a little bit yellow like this one is to look at the quality of or how transparent and how pure the porcelain is for doing that you can use also a light so what you do you put uh, your light on the guy one and you go very close and you see as i said it's very difficult i don't know if you can see it from the camera but you see that uh, through the transparency inside the porcelain there is no um Clam, I don't know how to say that in English, uh, no small particles, is extremely fine. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a piece of glass actually. And you can check the whole guy one. It is normal that from time to time you find small spots in it. Here actually I cannot find any at the moment, but uh, um, it's, extremely, it's extremely nice to see. It's very transparent and very pure. So you have to look with the light inside the porcelain and if you do that uh, uh, with this guy one here you certainly see that is not uh, um, well there are shadows also inside and is not as uh, clean as the other now is it totally fine if you buy a guy one that it is uh, um, casted in a mold 
that uh, it is not top quality porcelain if you pay just let's say 15 euros but the problem here is when you have to pay you want to pay for a guy one that you really like 50 euros and more then you really want to be sure that you get good quality and you have to do this check so it's always a matter of uh, um, quality pr price ratio if you want so let me turn this off okay so, as I said, we have uh, looked now uh, at the quality of the porcelain, how to recognize uh, the quality of the porcelain. To summarize, you want the porcelain to be whiter than white, you want the porcelain to be very transparent and uh, free of impurities. This way you will render much better the purity and the color of your tea in the gaiwan. The third topic that I want to speak uh, with you about is decoration and uh, painting. Often gaiwans are painted. I like more the minimal style, so I don't have a lot of gaiwans that are decorated, but for example this one has uh, just very simple blue line all around. I don't have much more to offer here, I have more gaiwan that are decorated back in Europe, but when I came over to the US, uh, I left those gaiwan back at home uh, in Switzerland. So, um, uh, but uh, I can show you some pictures, of course, and uh, hand painting a gaiwan or a cup can be an extremely tedious and long word that require a lot of skill. When I was, uh, uh, this spring in Jindajan and uh, I was uh, outside in a market of uh, porcelain in the evening and I saw this man that was uh, painting a fish on a cup and uh, basically the, the brush was so huge and he was able to reproduce so fine detail in the fish that I wasn't uh, I was not able to to believe to my eyes if you want yeah but on the other side there are also other guy one that are very easy to uh, other kind of drawings and painting that are very easy to draw and especially with the hand of an artist he can do very simple shapes extremely quickly of course this simple line is, is very easy to do on a potter wheel. You just keep your brush and, uh, and you get those lines. But even uh, some, uh, um, some painting like in our uh, carp uh, guy one uh, that is also hand painted can be done relatively quickly uh, by an artist. So how to recognize is if a guy one is uh, um, painted or decorated by hand or if it is printed. The first thing that you can look at if there is any sign of printing pattern. What do I mean by that? Uh, some time ago we had um, a, a fish guy one on our website that uh, was uh, a relatively cheap and affordable guy one. I believe it was uh, uh, 9 euros, like a very you know entry-level guy one. And that guy one had some fish some fishes on it and the fishes were printed and if you look very close to the fishes you see that there is a printing pattern so there is a pattern on top of the fish like small pixel if you want a repetitive geometric pattern that tells you that this was printed you don't always have that pattern when you print but sometimes you have and when you see that it means it was not painted by hand uh, this guy one here was also not painted by hand. We bought the white guy one, then we uh, manufacture stickers, we applied those stickers or ask someone to do so, apply those stickers and then put back the guy ones in the kiln to fire the uh, stickers on it. Um, in this case you can see that is a very very precise geometrical shape that would be very difficult to render with the brush and anyway, if you look several Gaiwan of this series, you see that all Gaiwan are exactly the same. Uh, so uh, here I come to the second aspect of it. You, uh, when you have a hand-painted Gaiwan, every painting is slightly different from each other. Even if an artist is doing 50 Gaiwans in a day, he will do always them slightly different. So what you can ask to your retailer or your online shop is to send you a couple of pictures of that particular specific Gaiwan. And if it is an expensive guy, one for sure he will do to prove you that every painting is different from each other. Or if you go in a shop, in a physical shop, you can do the check uh, yourself. All right. So we have seen now at uh, 
many different uh, uh, ways of recognizing handmade gaiwan and quality gaiwan in general. I really hope that these tips will help you in selecting your future gaiwan and also in appreciating more the effort that there is behind making this kind of gaiwan. So I said, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you know, if it is the case, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and should you be new on our channel, please subscribe and more video like this will come your way very soon. Thank you very much. Enjoy your tea moment and I will see you very soon on the next video. Bye bye. Ah, one thing I forgot. Um, those guy one here, if you're interested, this one I think is sold out. We might have a few more, but uh, we have to find them in the in the warehouse. This one here should be online by the time uh, you uh, will see this video and I really hope to be uh, to be able to do actually a, a video about this guy one because there are there is a lot to say. It's one of my favorite uh, uh, a guy one that I have here at home and uh, the cloud guy one uh, well, we um, we sourced this uh, last spring and it will take another little will uh, another little while until we will put that online probably it will be online next year but if you really like the shape of this guy one and in particular the craft of it i would say among these is probably the best piece of art uh, you can always contact us uh, uh, with an email or you send just a message and we can definitely already arrange it and send it over to you. This one here is just mine. I don't have any other. I just, I even don't remember, I now remember where did I bought. I bought it in a shop. I, I saw it, I liked it and I just bought it for myself. But I, I, I didn't meet the artist and um, we usually buy guy one for Nano Shan directly by the artist. So this one is for me only. All right. So now you know also what uh, uh, these guys are and if they are from Nanoshan or not and if you can have them or not. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.